Kenny J Show. Shanga shiri down to up to right things we. Nyaza chuzi se narrative ndai chid we. Kana mchida uti pisa deep ndai pid we. Make you spill a bean if you know what I mean. Andi. It's time. Hey everybody, welcome to the Denny J Show. <laughs> I Did I say it wrong? I made the wrong okay, item. Okay, no, well, let's this try is, again. This is put wrong. Let's oh, it's see. put wrong. Okay, <laughs> okay, there we go. Jeez. Hey, ev- wow. Boo. wow. Boo. Hey, Bye. everybody. Welcome to the Danny J Show. <laughs> My, that, that sounds more like it. Yeah. Yes. Not, uh, not this? What is that? What do, because I was like, what did I say it wrong? That is, that's <laughs> that is, wrong thing. Are we doing Becky? No, we're doing good. We are doing good. I'm, we're, we're doing I'm, better than good. We're doing better than good. Let, I think in short, I'll, I'll just say I'm happy to be part of this podcast. Mm-hmm. I I'm really sure. am. Trendsetters. I'm, you know. You know. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I'm happy to be part of this podcast too. Thank you, Becky. You started it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Okay. Yes, yeah. you did. It's yours. <sighs> you own this. Uh, yes. My man, where would I be without you? Wait, wait, wait. I don't think you want to know. Oh. I don't. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Yes, super. Drink to that. Drink mm-hmm. to it. Yes, bottoms up. Yeah. yeah. All right. We had so much fun last week. Oh my gosh. Did we have fun or did we have fun? Yeah. Yeah. People were scared for me though. Yeah. What happened? Are you going to tell us? If, if, if the Honorable came into your DMs, would you tell us? I would. Why would, would you? I keep quiet about that? Would you? I'll be flexing. I'm like, yo, guess who came into the DM? No, but he didn't. He's such a gentleman. Bako, do we believe Becky? Mm. What do you mean you believe me two percent? Let's see your DM. Munu, I'm right here. Take. No, okay, you deleted mm. already. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you did? I did not, because he did not come into my DM. He didn't do nothing. He yeah. did, we're just having good convo when he came into studio, and that was that. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. an amazing. And besides, yeah. you were here to protect me, so I wasn't even worried. But once you left, I wasn't there I to protect you. I went home to my husband. DM. He oh, goes down. He, in he's the even in the DM. <coughs> he's, in the, he's in the DM? My husband. Ka. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, so you had to delete quickly? I, there's no time to delete because what I see, he sees also. So if there's anything funny, mm-hmm. you'd have been like, Vicky, what's this? Or he would have dealt with the honorable. <laughs> my mm-hmm. man. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, what are they saying about that episode? Okay, well, <coughs> most of them were a little bit like, uh, <coughs> like you know, Timber, my man, you know, mm-hmm. speaking the truth and everything. And in the streets, um, I do, like, hear people talking, uh, especially those who are patriotic. Um, they were like, you know, Timber spoke the truth, mm-hmm. and we should mm-hmm. have more people like that. Yeah. And, all. and then there was some, there was one particular guy, um, who actually? Let me see if I can find his name. I, I I don't know if this person wants to come and have a try to interview people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then but, yeah. maybe they can show us yes. wow. what we need to do. Because we thought we did due diligence That's right it. there because we were questioning. Yeah. And I even remember asking him, "Could you? Okay, you you seem to have money to buy all of these things. Yeah. Uh, where are you getting the money mm. from? We just didn't dig into his pocket." Know what I mean, and, yeah. then the, and then there was someone who said you weren't standing enough. And yeah, yeah, this is the guy, uh, Tapera Doma. Mm-hmm. He says, Who's interviewing who? If an agent is supposed to get 10%, who does that in turn cover the remaining 90%? You guys allow him to sweet talk you and sidetrack you. He says he had money in England. Proof how many tractors and how many cows. And then what did the channel say? The channel must have responded to that one. The channel said, Don't get it twisted. This is a show, not a CID fraud. <laughs> we are not CID homicide or CID fraud. You know, but so sometimes what I just wonder what do people want from us? Yeah. Like really? You know, the, the the most difficult thing to do is to uh, get a guest and ask them difficult questions and have them answer without seeming like you are interrogating them. You you don't want yeah. to because it's, it's it's not third degree. You know you know what yes. I'm saying? And these people come voluntarily, so. Uh, you know, if uh, we get with someone and we ask them and we over ask them and, and we are like interrogate, they can just get up and walk. Yeah, and I mean, there's shows for that. What's, what's that one? Uh, SABC, Cut Blanche. 
go mm. on to cut blanche yeah. that degree you know get grooved there and everything yeah. here we just <sighs> and we did a good job because a lot of the stuff that we asked uh Tempe, it's never been asked um yeah um, and I think the reason why he accepted to be asked because you know the, uh, the atmosphere is cool. You know, mm. so we're not being violent or anything. We just ask him to. Ah, but but I, I also like what, yeah. I I also like what Timber said, and he said, "Come on, Daniel. At, at <coughs> least let this show be mm-hmm. the show where people get justice. Like those yeah. who feel like, no, I've been accused so many times. Like let this table be yeah. where people come through and be like, hey, this is my truth. Yeah." Uh, I, I think that was pretty cool of him to And it was getting kind of hard because that. remember, we say we don't do politics on this show. Dude. But now, you know, when you have someone like Temba, all you can talk to him about is politics it's mostly. Politics. And women. Yes. Or may- you know, uh, and, and stuff like that. Or but maybe <laughs> the questions we asked mm-hmm. had political answers. Yeah. I don't know. You know, so there's no way we were going to escape that, particularly with Temba. Mm. Um, and the other time, you know, he gave us the the, the commissioner of police's number. You, oh no, the guy that to remove. The he was thing. like, and then I was like, go back, go. Yo, mm, oh, he just straight up gave us the number, bro. <laughs> and we weren't trying to have. No, we were not. The, the boys calling us. We Yo, why are you giving the we boss's number? Yeah, but um, I was happy with that interview. Timber gave it to us, and he did well. He, yeah, yeah, he he answered the questions, and although. There were moments where I felt like he was just being smart, you know, yeah. Mr. Smart. Yeah, pants. I know. Let me, you know, let me so just give them an answer. Like what men do. You ask yeah. a man, where were you? And then it's like, you know what happened? Uh, what happened was... Mm. So and he's very good at deflecting. He will answer everything you will except for what you asked. Exactly. You know, because I, I remember um, I asked him about the cars and how you feel when you go and to the local said, hospital no, clinic he, or whatever. He, whatever. he, did he say then g- gave a good point... About but ministers. the good point had nothing to do with the question. Nothing. So that's a true politician right there. Right there. But men do that also. We do? Yes. Have you ever been asked a question and then you answer it directly? Yes. That's, that's, oh, that's what I do all the time. All the time. Oh. So you've never lied your way out or deflated? Oh. Uh, no. I'm not a politician, bro. I, I just tell the truth. No, I think there's a politician in every man. Yeah, sort of. Mm-hmm. Sort of, we give, you know, we we say the right answers all the time. <laughs> Try you say the right answers <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so then the guy with the steadiness. Um, you uh, did you have a, a few other comments? There was yeah. quite a lot. Um, okay, well, with with most of them, people were just worried about me. Mm-hmm. Yes, they were they were really worried about me, and I'm here to tell you, do not worry. And it was confirmed that you look like Susan. Um, those people. But Zamungakati Zanzuri Susan, Zanzuri Susan, she what's that iPhone, the big one? Fourteen Pro. Hey, that's <laughs> hey, Susan, fourteen <laughs> Pro Max. Yeah. Yo, Susan, that, that's fourteen props, Pro bro. Max. Hey, you're no, pimped out, Susan. Here. You're like, get out of here. Yeah, yeah but you know, it, it, I think it was just um, it, Temba is charming. Let's just mm. put it like that, right? Mm. Temba is charming, and I don't blame him for having fourteen baby mamas. Right. He's mm. a sweet talker. Mm. And, and the young, the youngings, were not happy that he, you know, he, thirty-five. Uh, that was the cutoff. He said thirty-five is my trade. Is my yes. trade like thirty-five and above? So now know, the twenty-five-year-olds were crying. Would go? What about us? What about us? Mm. Yeah, and, and but yeah, timber. Mm. <laughs> that's my trade. Th- that's my trade. M one, M two. Yes, M one, M two, mm. and um, he was very honest about you know his lifestyle. Mm. He was very honest uh, about it. Uh, but still, you know, I feel like there were certain things that he still had to give us in terms of responses. Yeah. Um, like when you asked about the car, mm-hmm. the whole farming equipment, he didn't mention what happened. Uh, he did. Um, to that farming equipment. He did have his own answers. It. Yes, he did. Um, his, thank you. Yeah. His <laughs> own. So we can't, we can't really dispute because we don't mm. really know. But um, no, we, really we, can't. we pose the question. We really that's all we dispute. can do. Yes, that's all we can do. Um, yeah. Then one thing that stood out for me in the interview was that um, it, he made me rethink my position as a citizen of, of the nation of Zimbabwe. Why is that? Because I, f- I feel like I'm not involved. I feel like uh, Danny Who, will do it. Who's your counselor? Sh- you see now. I'm taking over the show now. Who's your counselor? I, exactly. Like, no, don't do that. Um, and you had no idea. And I had no idea. So I'm actually on 
on that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a couple of days now. Do you know yes. you're cancelling? No, now? I haven't started. Yes. I said I'm, I'm on it. So okay. the first thing I want to do is to first understand the constitution. I want to understand when they go and decide what happens or the information that is put in the constitution. When are these meetings held? How can I be part of it? And then, you know, get to the whole councillor part, um, registering to vote. Mm-hmm. You, You're you not know. registered? No, I, I, I hadn't. Oh. Because I was one of those. No. I How think, old are you I again? I think it's this one. How old are you again? Oh. I'm old enough to vote. That's that's for sure. You've been. I've been, but old I, I have to yes. vote for a while. But then mm. I'm, I was at that point mm. where I'm like, Danny will do it. I don't have to vote. Danny will do it, and that's a wrong mentality to have. So when he came on the show and he was like, "Who's your counselor? And who's your this? Which one?" Mm. And I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" I felt like he was coming onto us like a ton of bricks, but he he was he was being real. Mm-hmm. He was being, he was really being real. Like, be be part of what is happening in Australia. At the by the age of eighteen, mm-hmm. if you haven't registered to vote yet, you are penalized. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. You know, like, and so they should do that here for people like Aska. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they should because I think I'm not the only one. There's thousands of people who they know they should go and register to vote. But when it's, is, is, do you think it should be forced like that? Like Not forced. I mean, if you're a citizen of a country, mm. you know, I mean, come on, partake. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the right thing to do. It's, it's your responsibility as a citizen yeah. to at least, you know, be, regist- be a registered voter. True. Whether you decide to go and vote or not, that's, that's another thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm working towards that and... I'm giving but myself before the end of the day. I'm giving myself before the end of the day. Yeah, sure. It was a tower afterwards. It was a tower afterwards. Okay. I mean, really. Yes. So today, what, what are we doing? Oh, so today we are chilling with a friend of the podcast. Um, and he's a very vocal person in terms of uh, the arts industry. Right. And in terms of life in general. Mm. Like, yeah. he's very vocal. He can just post about anything. I wish I could do that. Yeah. And he's been showing the, the, the show a lot of love on and social he, media yes, as well. And, and, and he's very supportive yeah. um, of like uh, upcoming artists, new artists, and even the mature ones in the industry. Um, he, he's very supportive in, in terms of, come on, Zimbabwe, you've got this. Right. Like, you, you are a talented nation. You don't have to be, like, at the, at the bottom of the food chain mm-hmm. of entertainment. Yeah. yeah. So... Who are we talking about? We're talking Becky about, about Plot Marco. Thank you so much. Plot. Plot. I'm so humbled. The introduction for me was like, oh, that's me. Or yes, else. that's you. No, no. You are very supportive. <coughs> and so um, I remember when I, when I started like taking bigger steps in the industry, um, film-wise, or being in front of the camera, I would always see your name in the comments section, like, go, Becky, nice one. Oh, my favorite. Oh, you're doing good. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever given him anything, like 10% of a gig or something to show your... <laughs> oh, 10% again. Tell no. <laughs> Something. Mm. No. Good looking out. Good looking out. Good looking out. I've given him a, l- a like. <laughs> I'll be like, mm. oh, thanks. <laughs> she has supported me. Yeah. 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 The last show. Amplifier. Oh, yeah. Amplifier. Amplifier. Oh, right, right. Tell us about that. How, how did that go? Uh, you do a lot of these uh, festival type things, and uh, you, you basically do a lot of stuff in, in this space. Uh, how did that one go? I mean, uh, Becky was involved. It must have been fire. Yeah, it was dope. Um, in terms of the content, it yeah. was awesome. Yeah, right. we didn't get the numbers that we wanted in terms right. of audience, uh-huh. uh, but we got some amazing artists from all over Zimbabwe that came through, right. and they delivered super, super awesome nice. um, talent. And we were already planning twenty twenty three. All right, right. This one was uh, w- this was this the first one or it was the first one. Oh, um, it was the first one. Yes. Oh, nice. Um, oh, and and uh, so the idea there is what to showcase talent. What is uh, the idea behind this? Uh, the idea behind Amplifier is to amplify new voices. Right. Yeah, realizing that Zimbabwe is sort of uh, rich with so much talent and that is. is failing to get <coughs> space. Right. So we put up this festival and took 
uh, the emerging artists and made them headliners and then took those that are established and made them like supporting artists. Oh, nice. Yeah. It was, it was so was, dope. That was a nice initiative. Thanks so a lot. Yeah. Mm. Mashingo had amazing talent. Uh, there was, what's her name? Monzon and Shian. Yes, Monzon and Shian. Yo. Those are chicks? Yes, man. Super dope. Oh, hip-hop. What is that? Oh, hip-hop. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Fire. I was there rooting for them to have a second <laughs> chance on stage. Like, can I come back? And they were like, no, just wait. I'm like, can I come back now? Well, so it's not a competition. It's just a showcase. No, it's not a competition. So every artist who was there got paid to perform. Oh, and nice. some of them, most of them, it was actually their first time to get a booking. Oh, nice. And we try to give them a sort of like a five-star treatment so that they get an experience of what it feels like to be like um, a successful artist. Nice. But the day before we had a workshop, we mm. brought in speakers and facilitators that spoke on different things that pertain to the industry so that at least it helps them become like better creators. Oh, nice. That sounds like big budget. Like a, a big budget uh, sort of yeah, uh, initiative. Uh, it was a big budget. Um, and, 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 and who's funding the, the, the who funded that? Uh, who are your partners in that one? Ghetto Stream put all the money for it. Oh, nice. They did a good job. That's amazing. They did a good job. Tell us about Gateway Stream and, and what they, they are trying to do. I've heard of Gateway Stream several times. Um, I've spoken to people about, you know, the possibility of putting our show on there. But I, I, I don't quite understand uh, how it works. I don't know if you, are, you probably understand better. How does that model work? And uh, do you think it's a good initiative? Uh, I think it's a brilliant initiative. Uh, it needs more support locally and also in the diaspora. Right. But in terms of what they've done, because remember they brought us re redefined, they've done so many concerts. Right. Mm -hmm. And all the artists that have performed uh, on Gateway Stream platforms, they say we got paid in advance, like full amount. Right. And that alone means <coughs> support for the artists. And during the lockdown, we saw them also putting up a lot of shows. Right. Uh, they also won the NAMA Awards for Best Promoter. But I think what may need to be done is possibly really look into the model and see how it could work locally and also connect to the diaspora community so that there's sort of like an uptake uh, where we are religiously subscribing to Gateway Stream the same way that um, Boomplay does. You know, now mm. in West Africa, Boomplay is the biggest streaming platform, but they also have got festivals and other initiatives. And this is one platform that helped Afrobeat, like really... Uh, become, you know, a monetized genre. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, and how different is it to Sasai? I know uh, Econet has an initiative of their own uh, for creatives. I is, think a, is the model similar? I, don't, I think it's somehow different, uh, okay. all distribution platforms, but I think Sasai yeah. is more like content creators bringing their content and then they agree on a percentage and then they stream. But with the Gateway Stream, they're also content creators. They're also investing in the content creation. But they also accept, um, you know, when you already have got already made content. Uh, so from artists, music, films, they're taking up. And I think they're doing more than just, um, I'm not an official of Gateway Stream. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, no, no, yeah but they're also yeah. doing online uh, sales. So you can actually sell products. You can book uh, accommodation, travel, and a whole lot of things. So it's like a one-stop shop. Or like a super app. That's what like they're super app, for. Yeah, oh. one-stop shop. Uh, Amazon kind of application where you find uh, from content to um, goods, you can buy a lot of things. You can buy oh anything. Yeah. Like I think I think the original idea was um, an app where you could uh, book through their um, their hotels and so on. Yes, and then they upgraded it to be more. I think it was because of the lockdown, like people yeah. couldn't access uh, shops easily, and then they saw a market there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they must not give up, though. I think it's a very good initiative for local creatives. It is, especially for, for creatives. creatives yeah. In Kenya, they have an app called Wowza, oh, yeah. where they assist influencers. Right. Not so much on the artist side of things. I don't know if they have anything for artists. But with the rise of influencers, so or how does anybody it work? thinking they can be an influencer. So how does, how it's does in that stages. one work? So you, you apply mm -hmm. to be part of their influencer bank. 
mm. right? And then uh, depending on your followership, like how many followers you have, you'll either be a macro, a nano, mm -hmm. um, influencer, right. and they'll place you there. So when a client, say like Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. is looking for influencers, and they're not just looking for nano or macro um, influencers, mm -hmm. they can pick from the pool that they have. That From the pool that we have, we think these four influencers okay. can actually push the message for, for this particular Coca-Cola campaign better than any other influencer. And then they get paid from that. And they get so you paid only get really paid. Good. You only get paid when you get a gig. So it's like your profile is online. Yes. And then when you get chosen, yes. you get a gig. You get a gig. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you get a gig. And you can still do your own stuff, obviously, to keep your profile, <coughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, active and all. But Wowza's job then now is to teach you like they do the workshops just like what um you, you did with amplifier with the yeah. artists and they give you workshops they teach you how to you know do your calendar how to post a posting program and everything and they have workshops where they have um influencers who have done well to come and speak to the upcoming influencers like okay for me to get the gigs that i have or you know the companies that i'm working with this is mm -hmm. what i did this is what i'm doing and it it, it is quite true because if you if you look at the difference between okay I'll, I'll mention like five countries we've got Zimbabwe South Africa um, Nigeria mm -hmm. Ghana Kenya right okay maybe six Zambia right if you look at the influences from those countries right South Africa and Nigeria can get away with uh, a lot of things. Mm -hmm companies actually want you to look a certain way right. before they can even work with you. Mm -hmm. And then you get Isisuma Zimbabweans now trying to imitate <laughs> what all these other countries are doing. But remember, Zimbabwe is a conservative. Yeah. Right. And we've got a very small population. And we've got, and thank you, yeah. great point. And mm. we've got a very a small population. So as an artist slash influencer creative, now you want to get your product out there, you want to be seen, and then you decide, let me do a bikini shoot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Coca-Cola sees in the like, ah, shant can I but Coca-Cola South Africa will be like, yes. Yeah, that's our person. That's mm -hmm. our person. Why is that? Uh, so so it has to do with the local um uh, the people heading Coca-Cola locally or heading these big corporations oh, oh, locally? Obviously, the marketing people. They, they look for a certain brand. They look for a certain... So what Gateway Stream is doing mm -hmm. is top-notch because that they encompass everyone. You're a creative. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's, let's get you making money. You go live on Gateway Stream for a few hours. You get viewers, a pay, you know, paid viewership. People pay, -per -view. pay yeah, mm -hmm. pay-per-view. You are going to make $300 that you were not going to make mm -hmm. if you had done this thing by yourself. Because you post every day on Instagram. Yeah. No, How much are you making mm -hmm. from that post? That's it. So there's Shanda no Kume, monetization there's there. There's no monetization. So what they did with Amplifier Fest, mm -hmm. if creatives are really serious, artists, if they're really serious, they would go and be like, hey, gateway stream to Shanda say. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Um, you you speak a lot about um, Zimbabwean music. Yes. And I think maybe let's just briefly get into the state of our music. Mm. How do you think we're doing music-wise in terms of uh, <coughs> what the young guys are bringing out now? Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a difficult one. <laughs> because, you know, the Zimbabwean music industry is almost like um, the has that Zuyuta syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like right now, everybody's hip hop is now doing drill. Right. Uh, everybody's now like going on the fire emoji. Mm -hmm. No. Plus, good. Yeah. But um, that's, everybody that's the most over remix song. But but Zimbabwe. sorry to to like interrupt on mm -hmm. your flow. The, have you seen the videos that are coming out with the fire emoji challenge? No, no, I haven't. Gosh, I haven't. are they fire? No. S some and then some. some. Thin line well, so what's what, what's the what's the challenge? Corn. What's the challenge? It, it's you just, just like do anything like to the an song. open verse, yes, to and the then but obviously you've got the beat in the background, the fire emoji beat in the background. It's mm. like a mini music video. I was mm. appalled, and I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, Have you done yours? 
<sighs> what would I do? I, I, what would you do? I don't know, but definitely not what I'm seeing. Okay, so so I think you have to lead. Oh, Show no. them how it's done. Hey, hey I beg. Mm. Go on, plot. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think the Zimbabwe music industry, there's been some progression in some areas. The quality of videos, some have really improved. Uh, and also live shows, we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of investment, right. uh, especially in terms of gospel, uh, quality live shows. Uh, but it's the actual acts. Mm -hmm. I attended one concert last week, and these guys are jumping on stage literally from start to end. Uh, uh, the, 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 is this is hip hop. Ah, uh, cross, especially Zim dance. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and okay, the, you, so, okay. Yeah, so I think we we are missing so many things, but we have also progressed in certain areas. What we are missing is that the music industry is no longer only for consumers in Zimbabwe. Right. It's now like a global village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we are not able to create quality content, it will be filled up by South African, Nigerian, Ghanaian artists. And they'll mm -hmm. come and get the real money. Right. So right now we've got uh, music that possibly has numbers. For example, ask yourself why with all those numbers that Zim Dance or Pools, mm -hmm. live shows, they cannot get a uh, corporate endorsement. Right. right. Um, the value of money that comes in, we've got the numbers, we've got the hype, we're happy with the YouTube views and stuff, right? But are we really seeing money flow through within the music industry? Is it, is it because of, uh, of uh, drug abuse and the music being uh, linked to Guka, Chamba, and, you know, because... But do they sing about that wise? stuff in the, in the music? <coughs> um, or is it... They actually do. Some, oh, some okay. of them actually do. I think um, it's, it's, it's a combination. You'd find uh, the drug culture mm -hmm. that it's connected to. Yep. Because, I mean, people think that I have a problem with Zim Dance. But I, I'm worried when you've got a pop culture that mm -hmm. feels to create a safe space for women. You find, you go to a show, mm -hmm. a Zim Dance show, the majority are men. Right. And possibly very few, you can actually count 10,000 people and you've got 50 women right. in there. Why, why, why do you think that is? Because... The women are not finding the culture cool. They're not finding the... Self, the or they like the, the music, but it's a rowdy crowd. It's a rowdy crowd, hmm. right? Yeah. So we need to clean that up. Because look what Ama Piano has done yeah. in Kwaito, right? Yeah. They've managed to present a culture that you want to dress Only like focalistic. You want yes. to be part of it. It's yeah. cool, it's trendy. So money then starts flowing because the company sees value. Uh, other institutions also find value in it. But right now, we are st struggling to actually have something that we say... Uh, this is what we represent in terms of our pop, pop, pop culture. Hip hop is done well this year; they've really done well, but uh, they still have to work because the lyrical content and the effort they need to actually move as a collective. So we have made some strides uh, in some areas. We've got international artists touring, Zimbabwean artists, Mokomba, mm -hmm. done so well. Mm -hmm. But are they not the only uh, touring? When you when you say touring, because these mm -hmm. people are going to countries they've never heard about, and people are appreciating them sure. because. Because it's art, but when you look at our music, our big artists, yeah, they're either going to England to play to Zimbabweans, and they're comfortable South in Africa that. and playing for Zimbabweans mm -hmm. in South Africa, yes. a and maybe Jabraiser mm -hmm. might have a bit of crossover yeah. where other people in other countries are actually just listening to him. True. So, so where are we going wrong there? Because Winky D is a big artist, mm -hmm. but when Winky D goes to England, he's playing to Zimbabweans. When it goes to South Are you Africa, saying there won't be local Zimbabwe. British no. <coughs> people that will go and, or they don't? I don't think so. If they do I come, don't. it's because they, they are company. There's a Zimbabwean friend type thing, you, sure. you know. I don't. I, I don't think people in England you can just get into someone's car uh, yeah. and then hear Winky D being played unless there's someone who knows some Zimbabwean. Someone. But you definitely hear some Burner Boy. You yes. hear some Wizkid. Yeah. You well, what's the difference? Why are we? You'll hear some folkalistic. It's a. Uh, you know, we have made music that if you don't hear Shona, you cannot relate to, right? right? So yeah. Zim Danso has been very localized to the extent that it, it fails to really cross over and get exported. Uh, mm -hmm. Big up to Freeman, what he just did recently. Amazing, yeah. you know, yeah. move. Uh, but, you know, we can listen to Ama Piano, we can listen to Niger music without even really listening to the lyrics. Yeah, we don't even yeah, know what the they're talking about. Know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's the quality of the product. Our quality is largely uh, substandard. It, our what? It, our quality, the of, quality music. of our music. Yeah. Sure. Because you go to Malawi, you go to countries that also speak languages that are almost closer to mm. Shona. Right. We don't find our artists vibing there. Mampi was here, she was big. Mm. Roberto was here, big. 
V can come and fill up a show here, right? Mm-hmm. South African artists can come here and collect big money and do like one hour show. But mm-hmm. our Zimbabwean artists cannot even go to South Africa and appear on the local media platforms there. They can go no go to South Africa, UK for years, 10 years, 15 years going outside of the country but they are failing to break the border. So I think they are comfortable in where they are. Yeah. But uh, of course uh Uh-huh. The only different the only person who just pops out is like uh, back in the day it was Tuku Tuku mm-hmm. had crossover uh Japraiser is is doing his but he's basically the only one um So I is mean, it I'm because we're a small uh, country or wise? No but we could be uh, Jamaica is a very small country <laughs> but very the whole small. world is vibing to reggae Jamaica so is smaller than us So what is it Okay uh, b- b- you, you you mentioned the quality mm-hmm. of the music Yes And I'm thinking there's some South African music that is just boring. Okay, but they can come and <coughs> it's how it's packaged. It's how they market. Okay, they so who's sell. responsible for pushing the Zim music brand abroad to make it you know uh, I'll give you an example. Uh for example, Japres. I'm very comfortable to talk about this because um he's he's such a brand that is really grown. Mm-hmm. If Japres are still being managed by his previous manager, mm-hmm. he could still be performing to uh, Weza Bar and all these very small places, ah. right. right? So there is a progression. As an artist, you get to a point where a certain manager cannot take you to, to the next stage. Yeah. Yes. Because things have changed. The world is changing so fast to the extent that you cannot be in spaces where conversations are being made. Yeah. I would pers- personally hope and feel that Winky D could possibly be an artist in Summer Jam the biggest reggae festival uh, in, in in Europe right? right nothing stops him right. i don't know what's their model i mean i'm a big fan of winky d mm-hmm. i appreciate mm-hmm. what he does he's done literally locally is 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 amazing on mm-hmm. stage he does everything right. but i feel that possibly they could explore uh opening up the space a bit and really push because he's capable he can do that yeah he can um entertain in in in, in Ghana and people will love him I'm sure. I think I I I must have seen an interview that uh, Winky D did with um I think it was Trevor. Mm-hmm. And uh I think the the issue of uh, collaborations. I don't know what he spoke about but he just shut it down because of the amounts of money involved. Because for Winky D to mm-hmm. to to blow up across Africa, he yeah. has to collaborate. Whether he's collaborating with uh with uh, what's his name Pato Ranking or whoever you know because you want to collaborate with uh, someone who True. has a big following so that you can rub off their following mm-hmm. but uh, what 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 stops those collaborations i don't think it's money i don't think all collaborations are made out of money it's yeah. relationships I, i but i think uh, before you have those relationships money uh, plays a, a pivotal role i'm sure japre has invested a lot of money in getting the collaborations True. once you get one big collaboration and you come up with a hit The next time you might not need to pay for collaboration with someone because they already know you. True. But when you're an upcoming artist and then you try and and get Benna Boy to to be on your song, you, you're going to get a, a big quotation. Yeah. But to, the level where Jabra is has placed himself because he's done Davido, he's done Mafik, he's he's basically done almost everyone. At a at a huge cost I'm sure, but it it, it pays off in the long run. Look at uh, what's his name? Um Diamond Platinums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Diamond Platinum's uh will tell you that for him to blow up it was because of the collaboration he did with Davido. He had a song called Number One, and then he did a Number One remix with Davido. Davido yeah. Yeah. From then on everyone was like who's that man? He's, he's been the man. Now everyone knows him and so on. So we have a lot of talented people, but Nati O, very talented. Mm-hmm. But for Nati O to be appreciated in Nigeria, yeah. There's so much music, right? Mm-hmm. But if Nati were to collaborate with Pato Rankin, yes, or collaborate with someone you know who people uh, you know like listen they, to, yeah. yeah, and then they'll notice, oh, this young man is fire. The next time he's he's doing another song, people are going to pay attention to him. But there has to be that investment. But the investment is beyond just the money because mm. look at the numbers. Mm. Uh, if you go on Winky D's page, mm. uh, he has a third of uh, Madam Boy's following. Winky D should be one of the biggest on most followed artists online right but there is no engagement right mm. their social media that's side, management that's management now. yes because if sure. you look at some of these artists they look at your numbers you dm them mm. they're like, oh, they're like mm. how many people are following you oh. so far mm-hmm. so it's 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 a lot of things around the brand the management uh, right. 
I'm not so sure what model they're following, but if they were to work on that, because right now, uh, Madam Boss, uh, Japre is uh, my TT. They've got like a huge following, right? They're mm. over a million, right? Or a million yes. all about. They're in the yes. million. So, so Winky yeah. D is on about 300 something? Uh, I think now it's 600,000 on Facebook. Oh, okay. Right. But uh, this is one of the biggest artists in the land. He should right. be beyond a million, right? Yeah. And those numbers should be able to get him even the collabs that he need. So right. the engagement should be beyond just posting, hey, Magafa, Trikwagat Kune Show. It should actually mm. be, hey, you know, even interacting with the people. Oh, uh, it goes and not along. Not only just when there's something no. happening, but just no. like engaging with your. Because the world is followers. changing, right? My fear is that Nokia was one of the biggest phones, mm. right? Yeah. You get into no Nokia moment where no matter how good you are, right? But the world is moving, it's changing, right? You've got your loyal fans, but if you don't evolve, you wake up the next day, mm -hmm. nobody remembers Nokia. If you ask the kids today, they don't even know what Nokia is. Mm -hmm. But at some point, it used to be the strongest phone. So I feel, I mean, this is a challenge. I know he's yeah. watching, right? Yeah. That they need to up their game when it comes to uh, management, social, digital platforms, networking, mm -hmm. connecting with people. And he may be very private as he is, mm -hmm. but interact with people. Get into spaces when you travel out there. Go to summer gym even to just watch. Yeah, these people they they follow Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. They should be coming here to actually queue and collaborate with Winky D, because he's one of our flagship. We're talking about him because we love him. He's he's such an amazing artist. But I feel there's something that they need to do with their brand. You make a good point. He does. Make a very like good point. Like the investment thing you mentioned, yeah. uh, it, it doesn't have to be investing in hey come and collab with me, but the investment can be. I need to go to this concert and just see yeah. what's happening it's like there. What Who can I meet? It's like what Carl Joshua said he, does, he says he does. He goes to these places and yeah. he, he he gets in touch. He can go to Dubai True. and then get in touch with the promoters and tell them, I'll be in Dubai these days, these dates. If you can make a plan, make a plan. So you have He's to proactive. know people. Yeah. He's proactive. You know, he doesn't wait to be called no. or discovered. No. He's just there. And it's so easy for you to get picked up. If you are there, yeah, I mean, there's work that needs to be. So done. I think th I think we've gone beyond the the the, the part of a of a of a local manager, a manager in Zimbabwe, an that, artist that manager. Has to is do with a local manager, but get yeah. like an international yeah. manager. But what I'm saying is, I think they have to look beyond just local management. You know, when you have a manager as an as a Zim dancehall artist, mm. his job is just to answer phones. Yes. Where do you want us? We want this a thousand and what what it doesn't. Go, it, there's no <laughs> no one is being taught how to manage socials. Sure. No one's being no, taught the other, and that's yeah. now a big part of the business now. Is it not now sure. just a case of I just want to survive? I don't care about anything yeah. else. But now now this is the problem. This is why they're not growing beyond. Locally Zimbabwe. is the most booked artist. One of the most booked. Possibly, he is. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there is a market out there that could actually do with his music. Yeah. There was that castle light bri thing, mm. the national bri that, that yeah, happened. Yeah. And it was packed. Mm -hmm. It was massive. It was massive. And I know it wasn't because they were getting a liter beer and a bri pack. Mm -hmm. It was for Winky D. He's a crowd puller. It yeah. was for Winky Alone. D. There were cars all the way mm -hmm. up to, um, from, from Kensington, mm -hmm. all the way up to Avondale, all that way. Oh. Just cars parked mm. on that uh, Bishop Gal Road, and I'm like, "Saka muna paka moto kari yake uku kuti afambe apinde um." No, no, come on. Kuno na bingi di. But then Make also, a valid point. you have um, very good artists. Yeah, Nati O is doing very well. Do you think? Amazing. Do you think we're going somewhere with him? That's or uh, he's just entertaining us, and we're saying he's international, he's international, but there are no international connections being made. I, I was with him last week in Germany. Right. And he was performing. In Germany. Yes. And yes. what I saw there, the reaction from non-Zimbabweans and the interaction. I was about to ask. So, so it's, it's, a German a Zimbabwean. Crowd. it's a Zimbabwean who got him there. It, it was a Zimbabwean that mm -hmm. got him there. Right. But then they managed to invite a couple of you know German friends and other right. people. So right. you could actually see non-Zimbabweans in there. Right. And I spoke to a few, like, how do you feel about this music? Mm -hmm. Like, wow, this is dope. How can we access this? So I feel he's got a market out there. And also the steps that he's made. He's one artist when he goes out there. He appears in the media. He's making connections <coughs> with the right people and so forth. Uh, and he's really driven because his his Master Seed album. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's still yeah. the best album. It's still it's the best. Still now. Yeah. yeah. And just his mindset. You can mm -hmm. actually see that he's well read. 
mm-hmm. he makes an investment into his art. He's going right. somewhere. Mm-hmm. And he's really passionate about what he does. You know, right. brands are coming on board and so forth. So I think he's one more of an artist that I think if the other artist could actually emulate, possibly a lot could actually change. In your view, what is the what's Africa's music capital? Like which country would you say this is Africa's music capital? Uh, Lagos and Nigeria jo- and Johannesburg. And yeah. jo- so so Nigeria and South Africa. Yes. So with that said, Nati O needs mm. to be on either a South African stage, not performing to Zimbabweans, mm-hmm. but like on like a big show or something, and also in Nigeria. Because I, I don't know, I, I stand corrected. Yeah. Germany. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay, eh, Wayenda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, his music is good and, and everything. No, l- let's hear from from the music capital in Africa. But which one? Like when if he goes to Nigeria and performs, yeah. we want that same Yeah, but we have read what Pato Ranking said about Nati O. Oh yeah. Uh, and yeah, because when they Stone came Boy. Yeah. And to get on that radar alone mm-hmm. an indication. So I think for Nati O, he's actually on the course. Uh, I hope he doesn't lose the momentum, uh, Perry Power, because yeah. what he has already done... In power, power. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if What's missing in Zimbabwe right now are booking agencies, like internationally connected, mm-hmm. that are able to get you on festivals. So you may get booked by a promoter because they're looking at just your numbers and stuff, but yeah. there are platforms, like what Japresa did last week. Uh, mm-hmm. He was at uh, Connect Africa. Yeah. Uh, alongside part of ranking and so forth. And mm. just flying on that ride alone, that's actually a lot of impact. So I think Nati O, if we give him a year, uh, is definitely going to go far. Did you hear what happened when part of ranking came through? And Yes. Did they you hear sure. what happened? No, what happened? Okay. Once upon a time. <laughs> when you say time, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> Once upon a time, a big artist came to Zimbabwe right. and came with his manager and said, hey, Let's do an exchange program kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you meet with the managers of these artists, and I will meet with the artists. The top artists. You know? So you have dinner with the managers, mm-hmm. I'll have dinner with the artists. Do right. you know who showed up? Who showed up, Becky? ABX. He was the only one. Wow. Why is that? Was the word out? Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah. It was yeah. taken out. It I'm told one of the managers, one of the artists or managers said, ah, you should come through to my studio. Mm. They, were, they were okay with clout. Mm. Pato ranking was in my studio, picture, picture, one, two, one, two, and not a sit down. Man, how are you doing it? Mm. What needs to be done? How can Give me a couple of numbers. It? Give me, you know, so how can I improve here? No, come, so not come through to my studio and not take pictures. There. So you can see the hunger and the drive. So Banda Angasibo na Winky D. Nati O was there. Yeah. I think the sense of arriving. I think uh-uh. that's that's the thing. I w- um, God forbid if I ever if I ever, eh? Please Mundi <laughs> Roy. Mm. We we also have uh some very talented artists who I think would make it internationally. Um yeah. Or at a, at, a, at a bigger platform than what they do locally. Uh, Nyasha David, for example. He's amazing. Nyasha David is a very talented artist. I could put him side by side to any other big artist yeah. internationally yeah. in terms of R&B or whatever these guys do. Even Takura. Yeah. Oh, yes. Very talented young guy. Sure. But um, for Nyasha David especially, mm-hmm. Nyasha David has some big banger of songs, but you go to YouTube, you look at the views. They subdued. The views are low, but the tracks are fire. And sometimes that can be <laughs> demotivating. <laughs> it can. Yeah, true. You can end up thinking you're not as talented as you are because yeah. are your people are not showing you love. There's, there's, there's more views, <laughs> I feel like people just want dance hall, dance hall, dance hall. But I think yeah. it has they to be very aggressive as well. space to appreciate yeah. other genres. Yeah, if, if he can be aggressive, because I think he's talented, super talented. Yeah. yeah. But he needs to be, because this industry is doggy dog. Like, yeah. it's not... It's not a but, but and also how R&B. can you be aggressive? R and B. Well, for someone who would like, I like, I listen to my music. Because he can only he can only do his, what he knows, what he does best. Right? Yeah. Then get people that are able to get stuff done. Okay, mm. so let's say you are the one that he looks for yes. to get stuff done. How mm. would you make sure that his numbers are good and that he's out there? 
Well, I think one of the first things that I'll do is just improve on engagement. Because it works. You're big on engagement, aren't you? Engagement works. I mean, I, I make money from engagement. <laughs> Yeah. It's purely engagement. So you're letting these artists down because you could be doing a lot. They don't lot. show up. You could be doing a lot. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've done it's, the hip-hop summit. I've done the Zim Dazzle summit. They don't show up. Their thought is like, ah, you know, Plot is doing it for himself. But look, you know what? If, if you don't participate, you don't connect to some of these platforms that gives you the knowledge, because the industry is changing. So there's somebody who's constantly studying how the industry is changing. But you as a creator, you are not possibly able to do that every day. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, everybody's like on TikTok, right? But right now, there's somebody who's creating the next app. And the next artist will blow up on the next app before we know it. Mm. So I think Nyasha David, he needs to improve on his engagement. He needs to improve on his visuals. He needs also to improve in terms of, um, I, I know like he's dressing cool and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're appealing to women, think about what women like, right? A fully dressed man. No. Which women? Uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I know you all like to see <coughs> meat and skin and stuff, but, you know, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think he has to think about the market. Who am I trying to appeal to? And if the market is just Zimbabweans and us and TikTok and a few people, mm -hmm. then it's okay. But if you're thinking of a broader market, your marketing and your packaging has to be also broad. broad. All right. You know, get some investment. Get somebody else to put money towards your music video. Ikoko is a major hit. Right now, it should be mm -hmm. at the same level as Fire Emoji, you know. But it needed a bit of that fire energy into it in terms of just the push. Yeah, but like, you know, like how you mentioned that we are quick to jump on um, other countries' trains and not like our own. You don't mm -hmm. see other countries doing the Fire Emoji Challenge. Is that on our part that we are not pushing it enough to make sure that it's seen what out there or it's not attractive enough? What, what are our influencers doing? Our influencers, influencers from elsewhere, they're, they're actually pushing a lot of local content. Mm -hmm. But here you find, uh, most of the times, I've had a few conversations, they're like, I, I can't promote somebody else's music. So influencers possibly need to get into the puzzle. If they cannot do it, Voluntarily, the artists have to engage influencers and pay them to actually push their music. So once it gets a bit of traction, imagine four or five influencers are doing fire emoji. Those numbers will actually reflect in other spaces and people will start doing it. What happened with Jerusalem? What happened with um, uh, Vuliget? We actually do these things. But also our media is obsessed with content from outside. From outside. We know birthdays for... Beyonce's daughter and everything. <laughs> but we don't know this information from the local scene. So, yeah. and, and even our accent, our accents on radio, our accent on TV and stuff. Like, we try Becky. by all means. Uh -uh, I use mine. No, what what you see is what you get, yeah, man. She's amazing. So, so that's not you. Except when I'm doing like voiceovers because you have to get like into character. Yeah. But this is what you get. This is what you get. Nice. Mm -hmm. So, I think <sighs> we have a national crisis when it comes to just being patriotic and loving ourselves and being able to sell that. Crisis. Yes, because right now, Zimbabwe music, there's a lot of beautiful music being made. Mm -hmm. But to really find one that you actually say, I can play this to somebody who doesn't hear English or Sean or whatever and they will vibe to it, mm -hmm. you can actually struggle. Because we don't have our own sound. No, like... I'll, I'll tell you... I think like we like do South have Africans, our own sound, South Africans but we're not have happy I'm a with piano. it. Mm -hmm. The Nigers have Afro, yes, whatever. So if any of our guys jump on any of those, they are copy. Because sure. you have some 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 cats who are doing some nice I'm a piano tracks, but they'll never get traction because it's not your genre. Yes, it's like it's, it's a Zimbabwean it's a borrowed, copying someone. Yeah, you know. So Saka, we are in a fix. The only thing that we have is Zim dancehall, which is not really ours because it's dancehall. Yeah, but uh, that's pretty much. And the 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 that music that Ja Brazer does, what do you call that? Uh, that we don't I have think he has created his own genre. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, so he has. Yes. Because even before the song starts playing, you can tell to this is Ja mm. Like Tuku? Yes, you Just could the tell. Just guitar. Yes, you could tell. Mm. You could actually tell this is all this is, yeah. this is Tuku. 
I don't so know, man. I, I feel like what, what you said is making a lot of sense. The numbers. It's about the numbers, but then after the numbers comes the engagement. So it's numbers, I'm, engagement. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking if we were a country of 54, 58, I don't know what South Africa is, million mm -hmm. people, and then we had Zim dance hall, it would probably make more money just from the numbers, wouldn't it? Possibly. Because South Africans... Yeah. All these guys who are bringing out nice music in South Africa, they can actually just survive on the South, South African, African market, market. Oh, because yes, it's a yes. big market. Because yes. there's money, because yeah. the economy is functioning. Yeah, let's not even talk about Nigeria because yeah. they got crazy numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, so all these Nigerian artists, they don't even have to go anywhere. True, true. They can just be rich and make money just performing in Nigeria because of the numbers. But for us, our numbers don't make it, so we have to make it internationally or regionally at least so that we capture the extra numbers from the neighboring countries, which we're sure. not doing. And like what Plot said, the quality also, because we can do all of that, and if the quality is not so good, Because good music, you know, like, it actually moves on its own. You remember that song, uh, Yaka Boluku, Yaka what? Yaka Boluku. You know that song, right? Mm -hmm. Made by uh, Mozambicans, right? Really? Yes, those guys are from Mozambique. <laughs> I thought it was South Africa, <coughs> I have no, no idea why. Bernard Boy jumped on it. Right. Right, do, 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 and do, do, do. we know system uh, magic system. Oh, Gao, 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 Gao. Yeah, yeah, right. That was, that was a huge, huge <coughs> song, and it, we can't even remember which country it was from, right? But because it was great music, so I think we just need to make great music. South African music, I'm a piano. They derived it from so many like techno, you know, from Detroit, from uh, Berlin, you know, and then they started mm. localizing it. They slowed down the tempo. Now they've got something. If you see the progression of South Africa. From Digong, mm -hmm. Kwaito, mm -hmm. Gom, mm -hmm. Ama Piano, mm -hmm. right? Look at what they've done. There is a continuation. You still see the Oskidos right now playing a part. Mm -hmm. But in Zimbabwe, uh, Eben Grooves, Gap, Zim Danso, and what's next, right? So, <sighs> we, 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 and a lot of this is not documented. In South Africa, we've seen movies being made, commercials being made. Projects being made, a whole lot of things. For example, what would have stopped uh, Two Spot by now to have like a properly, fully fledged record label? Mm -hmm. Maybe they taking have the whole one room. Oh, it's still right. there. It's still there, okay. right? Mm -hmm. They could have grown beyond that because Two Spot had the biggest, biggest share in the market. They were mm -hmm. making it after it. They could have taken over the whole Matapi flat and turned it into a, like a mega music label. This is what right. Kalao Jesmi did. This is what uh, Oskido, uh, what's this um, Kabza and, and, and Maporisa have done, right? It's not just the environment. Yes, people say Zimbabwe is bad, but we see South African artists coming to access the same money that we're saying is not there. So the money is there. And that is so painful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, I think it all boils down to artist management and uh, education. A education. Because, because you have a, a lot of very talented youngsters who started the studio and they've been doing what they started doing. There's not been any progression, mm -hmm. you know, because Kanamagata Ngamurumo, one room, now you basically run the genre. You should have, like, what are you saying? You should mm -hmm. have the whole flow you now. Whole Say you, want, you need to stay in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. let's, let's take over the whole floor at least so that, you know, now you have better facilities and you're improving and when, whatever money you're making, you're plowing it back into mm -hmm. the business. Mm -hmm. But that's not... They love cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh gosh. Mm. Mm. Very important. Mm. Mm. Because mm. right? And mm -hmm. then your talent makes room for you and you start getting a little bit of money. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna buy that thing that you have been saying They should know. They should know. And then I, I don't know if it's losing the the plot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Buzz. Yes, buzz on buzz. I don't have buzz. Okay. Don't have <laughs> I don't have buzz. Uh, crickets. Cr really? I, I got nothing. <laughs> oh. Oh, there we go. Okay, drum roll. Ah, okay, we need to find something. Mm, right? Buzz. So I don't know if it's that they're losing the plot mm -hmm. along the way and they don't realize that this thing that I have started, mm -hmm. it has to feed the next generation and the next generation has to continue it because but it's a very chill sport. So if they decide I'm done, I'm done. That is the end. Well, when was the last time you had the uh, Zim Danso, like a rhythm uh, that did well, or a song, new Zim Danso song? Take away Winky D, Enzo Aishao, and 
maybe three months. Because those are standalones, right? They're, yes. they're like, the, yeah. They've actually managed to evolve. They've created subgenres. Mm. That's what I think. So you've got a genre for two years that have failed to produce new talent. That should be an indication of where it's going. But the argument is that, hey, you know, we've got numbers, we're filling up, we know what we're doing this and that. But here's the thing. Pop culture thrives on renewal, regeneration. If you're not able, I mean, who remembers uh, uh, Soldier Boy, right? But at some point, these guys were really, like, on top. So it's, mm -hmm. there's a kid right now who's in school who's making, the, who's going to be the next big artist. You see what Holyton has done. Mm -hmm. But now when Holyton does that, everybody wants to sound like Holyton. Yeah. Yeah, we've got that tendency. We have it like, oh, if he can do sound like this. It's a formula that works. No, it doesn't. So we just work. Cook. Shabba, shabba. We are lazy. But but holy <laughs> thank That's you. Actually, holy <laughs> ten is there. Mm. Why do I want to come onto the scene and sound like Holy Ten? Kiki Badass is there. Mm. Why do I want to come onto the scene? That's why I loved uh Shien and Monzon because True. I like them. Too. They were th they were different. Yeah. They were different. She's got this this deep voice and she is a flowing. Mm. And you can tell, okay, if you put her and Kiki Badass on a song, you can hear, okay, these are two different people mm -hmm. um, that are rapping. But then there's some upcoming artist who wants to sound like Kiki Badass and she'd be on there and and you're like, no, mm -hmm. don't don't do that. It's done already. It's, it's been done. Already. Uh, you you posted something about Rocky. Oh yeah. Tell us about that. Wow. You know what? Rocky is one of the most invested artists. Like they there was so much money put into his brand yeah. over the past two years. But I don't think it's measuring up to the results. Uh, beat bookings, beat in terms of like real impact. Uh, I know there was a lot of view buying and stuff talk that was going on around. Do you um, believe in the view buying? Yeah, I mean, Passion actually uh, accepted that he does buy views. Oh. Yeah, people buy views. It's possible. Right. So um, he did collaboration with some of the big artists on the continent. Mm -hmm. he, he recorded with some of the biggest producers that are making big hits, mm -hmm. right? Uh, by now, he should have been somewhere, right? And I think... <sighs> somewhere like where Was, was he getting the right collaborations, though? <sighs> Those were big hits, man. Those were nice. But the songs were lame. No, but the screenshot, the gunshot song is catchy. Uh, it's, I mean, you know, I, I can tell oh, you a I lot of do, the I stuff that we bounce to on the Ama Piano. Some of it is gunshot. just crap. They're talking True. about nonsense or whatever. But for us, it's the beat and the vibe. Yeah. So that yeah, screenshot, that's screenshot, the gunshot, gee, 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 I don't know what the story is, yeah. but it was banging for me. But then now the association, like Passion Java is... Oh, so are you saying that yeah. his uh, his association with Passion Java <coughs> is the one that... If that man was coming from elsewhere, I tell you, Rocky could have been somewhere far. Ooh, proud. Yeah. Ooh. For real. What, but why do you say that? I, I'm, I'm failing to understand. It, does it matter who is backing you if you're it a good like artist? It. It, it does matter. It does matter to some extent. Why? Because Passion Java is now appearing in almost every video. Yes, you've put in the money. Right, he's like Diddy. But now yes. he's singing. He's yeah. also now just he's like, like I'm, an, I'm an artist I'm excited now. This saga. <laughs> but you remember what then happened uh, at the Sosa Awards, Diddy? You know that whole saga. Yeah, I've even hated West Coast. See, yeah, that's shook. But you, but yeah. but I I don't think that's. I mean, look, if I put money in your project and then I'm like a tira and I want to be there, the background. Is but it a people, big deal? But if people find your personality and your character very questionable in many ways. The but how does it affect the, the goodness of the music? If the music is fire, it's not going to not be fire because I put Becky in there and people don't like Becky. Okay, people don't like Becky. Because people like Rocky. They've always liked Rocky. Mm -hmm. we, we are hooked on uh, past memory. Mm -hmm. We're still thinking of things that were happening 20 years ago. Yeah. But, but, but we don't hate Rocky. No, no, nobody. No matter, no matter who, who he comes He's with, he's amazing. Mm -hmm. We love Rocky. Yes. So if Rocky, uh, if uh, Rocky happens to come with someone we don't like, yeah. But that someone Our we don't like is, is like pushing him. Mm. We'll be like, we don't like this dude, but that's a nice song that he did for Rocky. That's what I'm saying. That some of the music was very lame, like not well done. Mm. Uh, they could have done more with those collaborations. Remember, there was Coffee Olomide. Right. Oh, yeah, Remember yeah. There was those like Ama Piano songs. Yeah. They even did a remix for uh it's good what? That guy the that guy's song, yeah, yeah. Yes, the one was right. Um, and nothing 
that they made really took off organically. There was a lot of effort to it. But outside of that effort, they couldn't sustain that. Was it not like a project and any timeline could we need to do four songs? Uh, I, th- I think Passion Java was trying to, and then to get mileage out of that. Yeah. Um, and and nothing it. to do with Rocky. He's now singing. Like, now he no longer has needs Rocky. He has got a million followers and views. Rocky was, people were talking about Rocky and saying, Rocky could have done this, could have done that. But a, a lot of it was on based on what we remembered about him. Right. He's but, a, but Rocky did bring out some nice songs, right? Like those... Um, <coughs> the songs, the the the, the, the soulful, like no, the, the soulful, the nice slow songs that he did. Oh, the, uh, the acoustic uh, mm-hmm. thingings mm-hmm. that he was doing. What 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 what? That I don't know what. That, that that's song. nice. But but, but Those, like, why why nice are promoters songs? not booking him? Like for some of these major shows that are happening. Uh, I think it has to do with the attitude. I th- huh? You know what I'm Um, I think there was that also. Oh. The, there was some bad publicity as well, where he, he is alleged to not have managed to perform in Kadova because he was intoxicated and and stuff like that. So lifestyle then. So plays so a big role. so if if your brand, because that can easily tarnish your brand. Like we so love so your love would book exactly him every day. He wouldn't come. He and wouldn't and show up, but we still book him. But was hoping that he would show up because and he was a crowd puller. Even if he didn't show up, you still book him the next day. Why? Because. We knew Soja Love would deliver. He carried something. But he wouldn't deliver because he wouldn't show up. But the next promoter was still book him. Yeah, yeah. Now go show up. I remember I, I hosted, it was a Lotto, like the relaunch mm-hmm. of Lotto. <coughs> and uh, Soja Love was booked to go to come through. And <laughs> <laughs> Were you actually expecting him? For me, this was going to be my second encounter with him. Uh, the first one, he showed up mm-hmm. in in Bulawayo, and he did amazing, but he was late. Okay. The, and there was the, they said, we have to just wait, and then um, they had to, you know, improvise and figure things out while waiting for Soldier Love, because, you know, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, he did come. He didn't even perform for the hour. <laughs> it was like 30 minutes, mm-hmm. and then he just went off stage and done, Right. At this lotto, fine. I still have the pictures. Every time when I look at those pictures, I'm like, ah, <laughs> wow, Zimbabwean artist. Wow. We did what we were supposed to do, and now it was entertainment time, and there were other artists that performed before he came up. Do you know that his crew showed up, but he didn't? And not like crew as in band or anything, because he was using he back tracks. an entourage, a big one. Yes, so his entourage yeah. was there. To give that hope, you could know. Arkuya, No, the whole function happened, done, dusted, and the crowd was like, "Hold up!" You told us, soldier love was gonna be here. Where he at? <laughs> Nothing. Like you said, the following week, there was some function happening. Soldier love was there. Yeah. And I'm like, this is a big company, Lotto. If they had, you know, seen him do what he was doing, he could have been like a brand ambassador yeah. for this thing. Money in the pocket, but he didn't show up. So so what's the difference here? Substance abuse, okay, has been attributed to both artists. Mm-hmm. But you're saying the other artist just continues to get booked. The other one is not getting booked. Mm. What's the difference? I think Rocky, uh, what's his name, Soja Love, um, he was phenomenal. He was, he was not the normal being. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rocky is phenomenal? I yes, think. but there is a, I don't know, which one of these odds though? Anointing. 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 Ro- uh, Soja Love with some anointing. You remember, he's one artist who aligned with the political party, but never got blacklisted. And he even got dizzed at one rally, mm-hmm. went on to write a song and he did write. Mm-hmm. No other artist could, even today can do that. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, uh, I think the difference is if you are an artist who's loved by ghetto youths. Mm. Ghetto youths. You, you can't go wrong. You can't. If they, once the ghetto loves you, yeah, that's it. You, you can do the wrong, but they'll for, they can forgive you. Rocky's not really a ghetto artist. His, his genre of music is uptown. You know, when you're doing R&B and all this, it's bougie stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like what Nyasha David and all these guys that. And ghetto people No, no, want I want my, they want rowdy stuff. <laughs> they want mangoma. They, they want. Okay, okay. 
You know what I'm saying? So music of the ghetto is d- is them dance hall. So in so terms definitely of booking, automatically have a big. Yeah. You are saying promoters are not booking him. We're not seeing or we corporates see. are not booking him or just booking in general. But Maybe. you know how sensitive corporates are also. No, but I, I'm a good artist. I'm not in Zimbabwe. Okay. You have to be clean all throughout. Okay. Like you, you can't even swear on this show. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so can we rescue Rocky? I it's over. I, it's I over? Think, I think in terms of uh, making music, he can still continue making music, but I think he's an amazing creative. He's a genius. <laughs> Possibly he could be uh, the one behind the scenes. So Imagine him running a record label, a lot of youngsters passing through his hands. He understands yeah. music, his dance, or his reggae, his hip hop, you name it. So possibly that's where he belongs. So Amplifier 2023, is he going to be there? We booked some artists. I, I mean, I, I could try, but there's some artists that we booked that never showed up, right? Where you book yeah. and they don't show up. You book, you pay them. And they don't show up. They don't up. show up, you know? So we also look at some of those things where they show up and so forth. But with Rocky, <sighs> I think if you book Rocky, he will show up. I don't see a reason why. Yeah, I, th- I think he wouldn't show up. I still have faith in Rocky. I think Rocky, Rocky can still bounce back. I don't know what the story is. I don't even see him with uh, passion anymore like before. No? Is passion uh, Java record still on? I'm sure. I, ah, I don't know. Closed down. Oh really? Well, yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah, Wed, Wed says that they... We have to confirm that, right? Yeah. Eh, eh. I didn't even know. that. That's news to us. After all that noise and then... Maybe the okay. Facebook page still exists, but I'm told the studio um, okay, okay, but then how is he recording his music? Is it not Java Records that's producing the music? But Java Records was Oskid. Oskid is not there anymore? Ah, he's running his own st- things. Remote. It wasn't Oskid. It, there was the other... Who's the other guy? Oskid and Lovers. Uh, no, there's the other guy, the other top producer. There's Oskid and then there's the guy who produces for Jabra. Uh, what's his name? Rodney. Takur, um, Tamuka. 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 No, Tamuka has got Mushroom. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah. Hey. Wow. So, mm. Java Records, after all that noise and everything. I don't ah. know. Maybe they're there, but I'm told, like, there's nothing that's going on there. Then. But uh, I guess so. I mean, if they were there, they'll be producing music. There'll be artists going there to record. You also talked about mm. uh, TV stations. Let's talk about the TV stations that got licenses. Um, we, I think you know more about this. Uh, what happened with the TV stations? I think six were given licenses. Yeah, so six stations were given licenses in yeah. uh, November 2020. Right. So what that meant was that they had uh, 18 months to which to Roll go out. on air. Right. And within those 18 months, uh, ZTN got on air and then followed by 3K TV. Mm-hmm. And now the other stations are struggling. I know Kiona has been advertising that they'll be going on air. Mm-hmm. I'm told Rusunu Nguko is broadcasting on some, I don't know, some online platform. I don't know. Somebody oh, they went said, online. Mm-hmm. I'm here to see the content, but uh, somebody sent me a link. Uh, so I actually doubt that the other stations will be able well, to go. Be able to. Yeah. But they also okay. put like a really steep price for them just to be on air. Oh, do you know what the licensing fees were? Uh, I'm not so sure, but it okay. should, should have been like 100,000. I'm not so sure, but it was quite a lot of money. But I don't think it's the license. That's an issue. It's the content. Because you don't get like one hour of content for free. You know, you pay a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And now content has gone online. People now prefer to go and watch what do you have more than to yeah. be? I was about to ask you: t- Is there is there business in that field channels. now? Is the future, uh, the future terrestrial broadcasting is there a future? If you're free to air like uh, ZBC, maybe mm. you can enjoy. You know, and then you've got like national coverage, and you put out good content. Like mm-hmm. if ZTN was possibly on the same platform as ZBC, there definitely would be a lot of uh, mileage. But they're on like DSTV, right? Like ZTN How many are watching and three K. Yes. Once you're on DSTV, I doubt you want to watch because uh, there's a lot of competition. The minute you subscribe to Z, uh, to DSTV, you have a lot of competition. And I don't know if how, how these guys will fare. They're doing well now, but in the long run, can they sustain? Mm. You know, the cost of running a TV station versus 
uh, plot my goals, got an iPhone, yeah. and you can take videos and, and put them online. And put them online. And right now, advertising agencies or companies, they look at, can we put money on this platform or should we just go to Comic Pasta who's got a million followers or and just our post, our post and, post and we reach our audience and we actually get live engagement. Right. So they would rather not go to a newspaper or to a radio station mm. but actually mm -hmm. go to an influencer where they actually get the results. Where there's no bureaucracy. It's like, hey, you know, can you create a skit? Can you create something? Can you post this? Can you share this? And they get the value from influencers. So influencers have really become disruptors. And a lot of them have never been on radio or TV before. Back in the day, just being on TV and radio, oh. you're a superstar. Yeah. But right now, we don't remember online. some of the people that are on radio. To be yeah. online. Except those that made names like Becky. Becky told us she's on Cock on the Beat. I've never watched it. Mm. But uh, I believe her. imagine? I believe her. She's on there. I, but I showed you pictures. Didn't I show you who mm. we into, who's going to show on, like, yeah. you know, you know so But, but back in the day... We relied on Coco on the Beat oh. for new videos. Sounds on Saturday. Yeah, we, we waited for Titch to come out yeah. and show us the new tunes. and blah, blah. Now it's all on YouTube. and sure. if, But if that's the other thing, talking about uh, TV stations. Yeah. ZBC Online. Mm. You go on ZBC Online, you're just like, what? Uh, except at 8, they give you the news. Yes, except at 8, and they give you the news. But if you're saying ZBC Online... The, the content that you show um, on TV on TV should not be the same True. as what you put online. Online is fast. It's, True. you know, it's catchy. It's attractive. It's all of that. Mm. And you go in there. I think I went on wanting to see if they were show, showcasing, you know, Coco and the Beat episodes, because mm. obviously. And I'm doing this. I'm scrolling. I'm nothing. And I'm like, and then I also did a game show. Which, which did very well, but very few, except you were watching ZBC, then you would know mm -hmm. that, oh, that's the girl who presented the game show. You did a game show? A, a beautiful game show. The set was on point. Mm -hmm. It was done like... Well, why it, didn't they put it, it online it also? Beats me. Beats me. So you find uh, a lot of the media houses who struggle to survive where the, the world is going right now. Yeah. Uh, some will not survive because they still have got a lot of red tape, a lot of bureaucracy and mm. an old-fashioned way of doing things. And mm. if you look at social media engagement, they're also trying to replicate possibly Zim Celebs, some of the stations, right? Okay. But we already have got Zim Celebs. We already Again have got... With uh, the, with the yes. mm. And they're doing amazing. So why should we then go to um, a radio station or whatever that is trying to reproduce what we have? And Zim Celebs is fast... But I, like I, I don't see a problem in being a copycat or imitating. But, but do better. Yeah, imitate and, you know, give it a twist. Mm. You know, do your own thing. But, I mean, look, uh, for, for instance, everybody is outside, uh, like, this independent or privately run podcast, mm -hmm. right? Some stations have got three, four podcasts or live shows that are modeled in podcast ways, mm -hmm. right? And it's because they are now chasing what conventional media is doing, right? Right. And the struggle for them there is that they're catching up a bit late. So already the conversation last week was about uh, Temba's conversation mm -hmm. on this show. Mm -hmm. You cannot match that if you are in a brick and mortar kind of setup. Right. Because you have to office with, ah, my, no. my journey, By the time you bring the guest... It's already like on the streets. Yeah. Right. And also restriction. Mm -hmm. Like that interview we had with Temba, we could never have an interview like that on our national TV. Oh, no. The Bali's would be like, what the? Like, who are you? <laughs> Hans, come into my, step into my office two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you want us to air this? <laughs> to you know, so, <laughs> so uh, I think, I think terrestrial television is on its way out. And uh, even when you look at DSTV, so. DSTV is now pushing Showmax. They're time. pushing it in a big way. And the reason why DSTV continues to be relevant today is because of football. True. You, once they lose, if they ever lose that, those rights. That's it. It's over because Netflix, uh, Paramount, Amazon, there's the so much going on on the internet. A lot. You know? And um, 
Well, and a lot of online platforms that where you um, that you can like uh, stream movies. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't even have to go because DSTV will repeat. Because DSTV is like uh, like eighty bucks or something crazy. Yeah, and and then for you to uh, watch and the then same Netflix is eight bucks, nine bucks, or whatever. You could right. basically $11. subscribe to Paramount, <laughs> Amazon, true, true. and all these, and get top notch. And even content. pay your data and, and yeah. yes, on that top, eighty dollars you can top have top notch like content. You know yes. what I'm saying? You know, not not uh, washed out stuff, old uh, episodes and so on. Yeah. So the future is looking. Um, it's looking good for online, true, true. but they're not they're not looking so good for terrestrial broadcasters. Yeah, us. tell us about uh, who's on your radar, who's uh, making waves musically for you, um, who's on fire right now, who who are the artists we need to look out for? Uh, I'm I'm loving Saint Flo. Saint Flo is yeah, yeah. fire. Saint Flo uh, is doing really w- uh, really well. Leo Magos, MJ Leo. sings. Yeah, Leo Magos just needs to do some other stuff. So that I we know that he didn't <laughs> fluke. It wasn't a fluke, so we need some album. more. Oh, is, that a new album? is it out? Out now? Yeah, it's already out. Have you, have you had a chance to listen? I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what, Biggie Gay? No. Uh, and then yeah. who else? No, we're good. Um, Dance Okeda. So much potential. Dance, uh, o- Dance Okeda. Yeah, mm-hmm. from Chitungiza. He's really talented. Ah, yeah, yeah, definitely. If he's from Chitungiza, he's talented. No yeah, he's, oh, wow. Talented. No doubt at all. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just, <laughs> like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Just like That's that. Just like that. That's it for me. Okay. Mm, that does it for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Nolunti J from Laos. Right. Oh, yes, she's she's amazing. She's fire. She raps she's R&B. In, she raps hip hop. Hip hop. She raps in Devele, bro. Yeah. Oh, you know? Her? Oh, yes. Shian sure. and Monzon uh, from Maswingo. These two girls are amazing. What do you think of Tanto Wavy? Uh, He's uh, dope. That guy is, is amazing. He's a disruptor. Yeah, yeah because Holly Ten came and was talking about Tanto Wavy. Tanto I didn't know him. And then I no, went no. and I heard a couple of tracks. He's, he's onto something. I heard him at Amplifier. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. And what he's bringing on is something that we have not heard before. It's right. Fusing trap, sungura music, yeah. and some other, at times, maba piano into it. He's really he just needs there attention. were those speaking of uh, of that performance there were the, there was a, a certain group of guys i think not not a, not a group there were two guys that went on stage towards the end of the show yeah. and the crowd just went crazy uh, is it crazy uh-uh. they had like an english name but it was like someone and something uh was it uh, and son Mustafa and king i i think so. reggae no 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 I, oh, okay okay the regular ones, the people went crazy, but these guys were hip hop. The crowd just ah, lost their these mind. These kids are massive. These kids are massive. These kids will be international, I tell you. Danny Moods and Sun. Thank you, Danny Moods and Sun. I knew there was what, what is the genre again? Hip hop. Hip hop. Oh, nice. The crowd went crazy, and I was like, what? what, 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 what so what so they're coming to take the crown from the, the, the father of the genre. Okay, but remember, Who's there's, the father? there's father, father is calling and him king. The father. No, there's, fa- there's <laughs> father and king, Who's remember. King? Um, Tigons, he says, I'm the king of hip hop, and then Holy Ten is saying, I am the father. If, if, Nash, if Nash was, you would be like, Tigons? <laughs> but then what do like you, you call uh, Stana and Maskiri? I mean... Uh, what, what, no what do we call? What do we call them? What time are we up for? I, I think you know Maskiri Tata Guru, uh, and then Stana. Okay, there we go. Stana, despite all of the stuff, he still that guy still gets booked. Twenty years past, he doesn't have a hit song right now. Right, he still gets gets booked. Still right, trends, and I think he's really done well in terms of just being consistent. He's like uh, he's got engaged. Consistent. Uh, when you say consistent, you mean with regards to the just actual music or just Danny being just relevant? Really wants just to being break relevant. it down. Like our actual you music, mm, he needs to work a bit more. These youngsters are really fire. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think he's going to produce any more. Music. No, 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 no. Prime time is gone. But yeah. he can continue Prime perform. Time is gone. You know the limelight when it's gone is gone. I understand yeah. when it's gone. It is. Yeah. But I mean, he's, t- he's still getting bogged. He's still doing amazing things. Yeah, people think that we hate Stana. They also think that we hate Ja Praiser, but we really don't. I think when you look at Stana, mm-hmm. um, you see, if we bring someone to the show, mm-hmm. we're obviously going to Google. Yeah. Um, so when we bring in Olinda, and you Google Olinda, mm-hmm. Stana is going to appear. So when she comes to the show, we'll ask, are you guys cool or whatever? Yeah. And then uh, most of the time, the people will say something. Mm-hmm. 
Shadaya, same thing. But you know, us asking, it never comes from us, us. asking is, is, is a job that we have to do. Mm. If we bring you and you've had controversy in yeah. the past, we're going to ask you. Yeah. Because the, our viewers expect us to ask you. So people then misconstrue it like we hate Ja Praiser. Mm. We love Ja Praiser. Yeah. Ja Praiser is like the hardest artist in, in the country. Mm. But when we bring Temba Meliswa, there's no way we're not going to ask because that thing was all over. Mm -hmm. sure. We're going to ask him, you know, what's the story with you and Ja Praiser? And then he's going to go on a rant or whatever yeah. it is. Same thing with Andy Morizo. We can't bring Andy Morizo, not ask what happened at MTM. Yeah, yeah. So people must, uh, must you know, separate. You know, we, we don't hate any artists. Uh, we have no bias towards any artist. You understand, no, Peggy? absolutely. So people must understand. Because if, if we bring Olinda and we don't ask about the relationship with Stana, people are going to be like now comments say, like, what, what the, the heck? Uh, I think <laughs> you were about to say, right? I think some of the artists are very sensitive. They are not used to unsettling conversations or convers like to get their names being thrown there. It's just like, for example, we've spoken about Winky D. Mm. There was somebody who pop up and say, oh, plot has Winky D. This show has Winky D, right? I, I'm on a song, Winky D, where he mentions my name, right? I've done a documentary. I've like I've literally written about Winky D. No, but D people are years. always looking for controversial but, stuff, yeah. even when there's no need for something to be controversial. Because they don't want to listen to the whole conversation. They want to pick one part. Yeah. You know, that plot artism doesn't appear. That's mm -hmm. what they will run with. Yes. Right. And they'll forget everything and they'll else forget that everything you else that you've said to say, okay, look, I'm saying A, B, C. You know, Zim Danso is dead but not buried. They didn't listen to the other part. They just like... They, they, so so they is Zim Danso dead? Dead but... In terms of uh, renewal, yes. It's, um, de it's dead. We're not going to expect any miracles from Zim Danso. Except a few artists that will evolve. Freeman came out with a fire song. It's, it's, uh, it's jumping... Uh, uh, he has uh, outgrown. He has actually Nati O is killing if it on the streets. If you check all of these artists we're mentioning, Enzo Aisha, Nati O, Winky D, they've outgrown Zim Danso. Is yep. it not Zim Danso that is uh, evolving? Same like what happened with Kwaito, Kom, Amapian. Zim Danso, is it not evolving also? But when you evolve, you don't... Uh, like if I'm doing Zim Danso and then I start doing Ama Piano, I've not evolved. But right. these guys, you know, Nati O is still doing Zim Danso. It's cleaner now. It's more like Jamaican music, but it's still within the dance hall ra range. These we, guys are these guys are taking different directions, but it's all within the umbrella of dance hall. Isn't it? I, I think what we just don't have is something to define it. You know. Yeah. So it's it's just lacking a term. But if you look at what Enzo Aisha, what Just Signal is doing, mm. a lot of the you can't put in them in the same bracket. Killer T, right? Mm. But there was something that defined Zim Dance when it started, from the culture, the style, the sound, you know, the Zugubu kind of vibe, right? Mm. So I think what Zim Dance is lacking right now is our curators that we act for the genre to say, look, this is the direction that we are taking. Mm -hmm. So they've maintained it to say, look, we are still this, right? But if you check the rhythms that are coming out, this year we've had like 12, 15 rhythms that have come out, mm -hmm. but we are struggling to actually pick a single song that was it. I don't know who, who came up with the term Zim Dancehall because if you look at reggae in Jamaica, mm -hmm. you have lovers rock, you have conscious, you have the hardcore, you have an array of... Of, of sounds, but they're all reggae. So I'm looking at Zim Danso being the same, but then there's the slow Zim Danso, there's yes. the, 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 I don't even know if you can call it what, what uh, what's this guy? Conscious, and no, not conscious. The local mm -hmm. guy, the one who does um, l Lovers, lovers Rock. Um, Celsius. Celsius. Yeah. That is not Zim Danso. Mm -hmm. Would that fall under Zim Danso? Because that's like conscious reggae. That's like it's conscious reggae, 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 you know? Yeah, but was it but ours it, to begin with? Are we not taking this from Jamaica? No, no, we are. Definitely. The minute you say dance or anything and you put a Zim in front, it's, it's still Jamaican. It's the country's um, name. Yeah. Is there South African dance or? Uh, I mean, there was Lucky Dube. Lucky Dube was doing reggae. Reggae. But he, he was he just a reggae artist. He was just called a reggae artist. He wasn't yeah. so I don't know who called the South African I don't know who, who grouped them to call them Zim dance or to call it Zim dance or. I think that person is the one who was giving us his problems. Even identity. But at the same time, 
it was limiting it to just being Zimbabwean. I I personally feel that possibly Zim Danzo could have got a different name. Yeah. Uh, in Tanzania, they had Bongo flavor, mm-hmm. right? In Zimbabwe, they had Eben Grooves. But if you check, but Eben Grooves doesn't mean anything because you had rap in in there. You had R and B. Yes, it was a you groove. had you had house. You had all sorts of stuff. It was just being called Eben Grooves because whoever the people were were just lazy to say uh, we're not gonna. It's just a group of youngsters and they're from urban areas yes. and they're grooving. So therefore, Eben, Eben Grooves. Grooves. This is why I'm saying that the pop culture in Zimbabwe needs curators mm. uh, that are able to actually. You see what Delaney was doing. Delaney is Delaney is a legend. He's a legend. What a lot of people don't don't know. Do you know Delaney? Yes, I know. Were you born? Okay, <laughs> go on, go on. Delaney is a legend. We need to have Delaney so on the show. Delaney, he, he had a direction. You could actually see the direction that he's taking this Zimbabwean music. Yeah. And now I see what Tamuka and Oskid have done. Right, legendary stuff. Yeah. Right. For over the past ten years, they've produced so many hits. Levels, they've done amazing. But I think they need to actually be the leaders for the music industry and say, look, you know what? This is what we've done. Look at what Maporisa and all these guys have done. Right. With Big Nas, Mapisha, and coming up with Gom. Right. Mm-hmm. It was a big thing. Right. And when it was big like that, we had stars that were identified with it. We can't say. Babes or Dumo does a piano, unless he's a stud does. But at that time, Babes or Dumo was the biggest artist just mm-hmm. three, four years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But who remembers mm-hmm. it right now? Mm-hmm. Right. And as if they play the song. Now <laughs> we've got uh, Uncle Waffles and all these other artists that are popping up. Yeah. Mm. Right. So this shift, these changes, right, for pop culture, they have to be a bit deliberate. If you're to say, okay, it's Zim Danso, but we have some sub genres, mm-hmm. and they have to be identified somewhere, somehow, so that young people are able to actually say, okay, look, we're now following this kind of path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you follow that kind of path, you're able to market a unit and say, look, this is what we're representing. What's the pop mm. culture in Zimbabwe right now? Like the current pop culture, what would you call it? Peggy? I'm blank, bro. You're the one who's on radio, you know these things. So yeah. you would find it's actually Be defined surprised. by personalities, right? We can... We have artists that have grown bigger than the <laughs> genre. Mm-hmm. Winky D is bigger than Zim Dance or collecting, like everyone put together. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Enzo Aisha has grown bigger than, the, possibly not the, the whole genre, but he's has, he has outgrown. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think we have artists that have done so well. We now see them with live bands. I must not take away the good that is up, actually come out of Zim Dance. So people being empowered, money being made, and so forth. But to actually have an industry that we can actually touch and say, we've got an industry, money is flowing from A, B, C, D. If an artist is not on lineup or limelight, they are gone. Where is Boom Beto right now? Oh but my God. For some time, there was you Boom own the Beto. streets. Mm. Right? I can go on to name sure. the artists that own the streets at some point, mm. but they are forgotten. But were these artists not talented? They were. They were. But isn't it a, a, a case of time mm. and because you all can't be, I mean, mm. all can't be was big time artists. You, know, hey, you, you all can't just be like big. There's never mm. so I, I, Yes, but I'm watching our at Tongo Pera. Right. That's what I was going anywhere far. You remember the guy who did uh, the Swabao when lockdown? Oh, yes. Right. Where is yeah. that guy? I, I, those were, mm. uh, is, is like a, he was like just a like he was like a pain killer for us. Yes, that time. he was a pain killer. <laughs> Two minutes. Yeah, mm. but we've got so many talent, talented people, artists. But you not, know, if you are going to consider Muno mm. Anubudita a track, and then you're like, oh, this is a great artist. Mm. But maybe I was just given that one song, Dango yeah. Funga, like like a fluke, like he yeah. said, which ah, it's a song and. No. And that's it. That's that was my gift to you guys. Because it's like Jama but I don't know where he is. Let now. me go back. But you see what Holyton has done. Mm. This way the aspect of education management comes in. Holyton blew up with one song. He made follow up songs. No, but he's an artist. He set out to do he's this. He's an artist. He's set out to be an He left artist. school and he said, I'm going to be a hip-hop yeah. artist. Yes, yes Let but me do something Holiton did for that COVID. at a time when there were not so many hip-hop artists. Actually, there was nobody who was making hip-hop uh, trend like he did. 
and now we see a whole new kwangu na nakagonza wana na stana na na wacho wao na masikiri yeah i mean t gonz is done well but i think you, you, you know what um we've got some that have really done so well but i feel that zim danzo could have been somewhere it had the numbers like it big the big like mega like taken over like taken over like we should like be that would be the but, sound but i think i think zim danzo is making more money than hip hop if you are to look at the number of people who are employed in zim danzo compared to hip hop <laughs> hip hop is only 10 votes jt and i don't know who else no hip hop is not in saint flow yeah you know the so, maybe it's five people Yeah. But when you look at Zim Dancer it's a whole roster. I mean, you know, you can you can fill in a couple of pages of artists who are actually sure. who are actually booked every weekend somewhere. So Zim Dancer in terms of what is grossing, it's grossing more than hip hop. That that is very true, but I'm saying Zim Dancer could actually be far ahead. Okay. Right. Than it is. Than where it is. It could be very very much far. Ahead. We we're having Zim Dancer shows charging $3, $2, mm-hmm. right? And then we're having a show a DJ from South Africa who comes in in the same space he charges $20 in Gwanda not not in Arara we're talking of Gwanda mm-hmm. and they make the money so i feel that there is to be more ambition from the crop of Zimbabwean the artists they cannot be like our trima ghetto is we all ghetto is we come from Stungiza i come from Glenview mm-hmm. we all come from the ghetto but we emulate we desire what is better mm-hmm. and for them to actually desire what is better they have to see how things are being done differently Yeah, but I think we also need to respect our artists based on what he just said. Sure, three dollars, two dollars. Avana, avana, but love. My ghetto is only love, but avana, my dollars. Love, then the night, then I don't know, na kila T or Freeman or whatever, but you can do the ten bar, yeah, you don't worry. Because three, you each other need to get that. Three, I don't know, my one, but the three, man, you genuine three, you love, Jaja. You don't want three, I'm going to believe. I get that, but then sure. in 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 the case where he's talking about big concerts, yeah, and you are you are okay paying twenty bucks because it's an international artist and yeah. not your own. What is twenty dollars for who? Yes. Ah, kind of. Mm. Yeah. But you, but you find, uh-huh. when these people come from South Africa, these DJs or whatever, they are appealing to a different market, uh, a than, than, market. Than, than, than than our ghetto youths. Get it so 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 na wa for zero kuti chiko che what wa player na wa for no go run itsa no marenye uka player zero zero and runo kuti because i is real ji music yabo music ana wa for zero ya vanhu vacho na iterero ma 10 ma 20 i think okay but what, right. what what stops enzo asha from going to south africa and entertaining south africans cuz his music bit racho manja no, school cross music yake iri ku appeal ku ma ghetto youths i school appeal i na cross over manji yo yo maybe it's big, like you're saying maybe it's the quality of music the production you do or because south africa for example you know reggae is not that big in south africa yeah. first of all okay even hip hop artists like pick one hip hop artist from zimbabwe who is going to south africa right now to perform for south africa nasty c comes here fuse up mm-hmm. for twenty dollars could but i think takura could do it because takura ane ka chitreka hip hop rmp yeah. takura could do it but manje kuti vamudzwe for them to know about takura Takura must have collaborated with Nasty C. Takura must have done a song with AK with Casper. Yes. Yeah. So and that then they, if they post so that his they, music, like, oh, this, exactly. this dude is fire. Yes. Yes. And then at some point he will end up being able to do his own show. You see that was the point that I raised at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. that to was say it. look you know what we need to get into these spaces. When you get into South Africa, usangwe enda ku bawa and from bar and then you go to the lodge because I'm told like for example when I was talking to one artist I was like what do you do when you go to South Africa They're like the first thing I do is start looking at which town am i going which which girl can i hook up with right mm. and i you know what and i was like make an effort text sabc write an email say i'm is mabona artist i'm coming to this space can i have an interview get into that space get on by 10 15 artists how did um uh, selmam to do it how does he do it okay mm, mm-hmm. maybe you can say the legacy of tuko right but nothing stops amara brown from going to south africa and entertaining south africa She is amazing. Yeah, she so can. artists may think that uh, I'm insulting them and saying they're not. I'm saying you are talented. You can actually be in the same space. Mozambique go there with um uh Chibadura was going to Mozambique and attending Mozambicans, right? They actually almost owned him. System Tazwi was doing the same. So we need to create something that is distinctly Zimbabwean. 
Makaz is coming here dancing borode for us. Right. Dance yedu. Dance yedu. Right. So God. we we have it all but we need to be deliberate. Nigerians are deliberate. With one song they can come here and fill up with just one hit. So if I was Zimbabwean artist start also going outside of the country and performing outside mm-hmm. of Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Or even in the UK. For 15 years going to UK performing for Zimbabweans. Fine you're getting the money, but go and perform for a different audience. Book with a booking agency, get into a festival, perform there. Get even 50 or collaborate with even a little known artist from Southampton. You see what it wa- what will happen. What will happen? Go yeah. to South Africa, look for even a spent force or an artist like Fred Gwala. Collaborate with them. See what Fred will happen. Fred Gwala. Imagine. You know Fred Gwala, right? Of course you do. Yes. You grew up listening to his music. Ancient. Imagine T Gons <laughs> featuring Fred My Gwala. elders. Mm. What My will elders. happen there? Yeah. Right. There's going to be a market of people that will say, "Oh, wow, who's this guy?" Mm. Right. So, mm. some of these steps we need to be just be deliberate. Otherwise, we will not see our artists on some of these big concerts like uh, Citizens mm, Global mm. <coughs> will not see our artists making real money and the biggest threat is that we no longer have a monopoly in terms of what people listen to people listen to good music that's it you, you say oh you're not supporting local but people will support what interests them you know so yeah but we're not far we're somewhere there we're having this conversation but artists yeah, need sure, to after know. having this conversation I feel like we're very far. <laughs> Not even a stone throw like kure 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 kure. Oh, uh, yeah, we want to thank hopefully we'll get there. Pl- plot Marco, yeah. a friend of the podcast shows us so much love on socials. Uh you guys are doing a, awesome. Thanks. Thanks a lot, my thanks, man. man. Tell us about your socials uh for the people uh for the viewers. We have uh, plot Marco based? socials. Where, 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 where are you based? I'm a global citizen. You're a global <laughs> citizen. I work at, uh, uh, why uh, I do ask mm-hmm. is because maybe I decide okay. I want to expand my territory as uh, as an MC okay. or a presenter. I get into your town and I'll be like, hey, plot, I'm around. What can be done? Okay, so I'm based in Dortmund, uh, Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but I'm working. Internationally. Internationally, yes. And yeah. You're always up and down. I'm the globe is down. your home. <laughs> Zimbabwe is an amazing story. I mean, my story elsewhere is not complete without talking about Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. The art here, the opportunity here. So we, as much as I also talk about stuff that is not happening, I'm also complimenting amazing things that are happening. Yeah. So there are a lot of amazing things. We've got such a podcast within a short space of time. You guys, the kind of following that you've built, the content that you've created, the impact that you have made in terms of just the the narrative in the community and it's 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 amazing so if you look at that and give it a very stable economy it could be much bigger than this mm. yeah. nice get thanks for yourself then you did well that's one Becky. Okay. but thanks a lot my brother um, so when, are when are you back when are you back Yeah, the uh, handles, I think you must say them and then these guys will put them on the screen as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going back next week. Uh, yeah. But coming back on the next project, like I'm always plotting new projects. Yeah, yeah. 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 and so this time you were here for, you, had, you have a festival, Craft, what, what was the name of the festival? That's uh, going down. Of course, uh, w- when, when this airs, it will have been done, right? Yeah. I'm jo- yeah. yeah. Uh, so Craft, I'm just uh, working as a consultant. So I consult, a consultant. I'm a consultant. All right, right. I'm just doing... Um, digital okay. marketing for them but I'm co-organizing the Battle Rival School which is an international breakdance event hip hop event right uh with some international guests coming through and yeah by the time the show goes on it would have happened oh nice yeah. and uh, digital marketing um you, as a consultant if people want to get in touch with, with you how do they do that uh plot mark aclo- across all platforms nice mark, yeah. okay. and i'm right. sure you charge nice money for that and I think people are still warming up to the idea of like, ah, okay, you can actually pay to post, you know. Mm. Uh, but I'm happy that the companies here are giving us, you know, quite some good business. That's good. Yeah. Nice. Um, Thanks, Plot. Yes. Thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, Boys the Turners TV, the channel. <coughs> the Danny J Show, the hottest podcast. Anywhere on YouTube. Correct, Becky? I, 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 oh, you said it nice. 
anywhere on YouTube. I, I normally just say Zimbabwe, but yeah. Anywhere, anywhere on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and our Twitter account has changed. It's no longer the. It's just Danny J Show, okay? So follow us on Twitter. We want to be part of a conversation. Till next week. Thank you. Danny J Show. Songa ziri down ta up ta right things we Nyadza to this in a retief and I cheat we Can I'm chill out deep is a deep and I pit we Make you spill a bean if you know what I mean Andy It's